Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with ThomasHenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data Big Questions. And today I've got a question in from the community from something that I've kind of really wanted to talk about a good bit here lately. So today I'm going to talk about really just give some tips on like what I would do from structuring a resume for a Hadoop administrator and how to kind of factor in, okay, I don't maybe have experience, maybe you're brand new out of college, you just finished your bachelor's or your master's. You want to enter into an amazing field, which is big data, right? That's why you're watching this channel. That's why you've already clicked the subscribe button, right? So we're going to talk about it today, and I'll give you some of the things that I did when I was just starting out, and hopefully those tips will be helpful for you, but maybe even just get kind of get the wheels kind of turning. So find out all about that right after this. So welcome back. So today we're going to jump in and we're going to talk a little bit about, okay, how would I structure a resume specifically for Hadoop administrators, but this can apply to Hadoop developers or anybody that's kind of really trying to, you know, jumpstart their career in, in the Hadoop big data um, space, or, you know, maybe you've have some experience, maybe you don't have specifically Hadoop experience, or maybe you have a ton. Let me, I'll just kind of give you my thoughts on how I structure those and, you know, what, what I think, you know, hiring managers are looking for, and then even the machines. But before we jump into that, I do want to give you the opportunity to talk about, you know, any questions or any topics that come on your mind. So if you would like for me to answer your question um, on Big Data Big Questions, put them in the comment section here below or go to thomasinson.com forward slash big hyphen questions, and I'll answer those questions the best I can. So if you're waiting for me to answer your question, just be patient. I'm actually onboarding somebody to help me with some of my editing so I should be able to get to them a little bit faster maybe get some more releases you know a couple times a week or maybe even get up to you know three to four times a week so it'll be pretty pretty interesting so make sure you sub click to subscribe and now let's jump into our question today so this one actually comes in from thomasinson.com so somebody you know went to big data big data questions on my website and submitted this question so it's uh Starts off, hi Thomas, uh, I'm done with my master's degree in computer science and I've also done some of the Hadoop administrator. And my question is, how do I write my resume as a data engineer? So I'm gonna tackle this a couple different ways. Uh, I'm gonna assume, first off, congratulations for getting your master's degree. And you know, I'm excited that you want to, you know, you've gone through computer science degree or computer engineering degree and you're ready to jump into the big data field. I think that's an awesome choice. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad you subscribed to this channel so that you can follow along and get some more tips. Um, the way that I would look at it is, you know, the first thing I would do is, I'm just gonna assume that maybe, you know, this is your first job since you're just uh, coming out of your master's degree. And so maybe you don't have as much on the job experience. Maybe you have an internship or, you know, maybe if it's if it's somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience right now in their career and they're, they're hoping to switch into data engineering, this is how I would structure it. So the way that I structure my resume when I was just starting out is I would take and I would make sure that I had a project section, but also the work section. And so the reason I did that was sometimes, like I said, you're not going to have specific experience or it's not going to be listed in your job title for what you have experience for. But the job that you're trying to apply for is maybe a Hadoop administrator, right? So maybe you've gone through some courses, maybe you've built you know, your own Hadoop environment at home or been involved in some open source projects, but it's not particularly something in your job. Maybe you're a software engineer, maybe you're a SQL engineer, and you haven't really jumped into the big data space at your current at your current job, or maybe it was an internship. Having that project section gives you the ability to go through. Another thing it does, especially for new for new people into the to the field. So maybe you didn't even have an internship. Maybe you have you know very very little work experience that applies to anything. This gives you the opportunity to showcase the things that you've been doing extra, right? Because if you watch this channel, I talk about being involved in open source. You know, having some side projects that you're working on on your own you can include those in there. And that will help you to one, show that you've taken initiative in, into the big data field that, hey, I've done a lot of research, I'm actually involved, I, I want to be a part of the Hadoop community, it's not something I've been able to do, I'm really excited about that. So the hiring manager or the person looking at the resume understands, hey, they have some of the experience that we're looking for, and I mean, this is something they're doing um, in a project. Also gives you the chance for, especially for students, to be able to take some of those projects and some of those skills that your very smart professors have kind of set you up for to be able to showcase, hey, you know, this is my first job, but I mean, check out some of the things that I've done through some of my coursework. 
that's at a high level how I structure my resume to kind of walk through it. Now, I know if you're looking for tips or you're looking for somebody to help you write your resume, there are plenty of services out there. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. So you can go to Fiverr. There's some people on LinkedIn. There's some people that can really help you fine tune that resume. resume. But my specific thought process is make sure that you're adding a project section so that you can pull out and put some of the extra things that you've done. Now, if you, you know, if, if you're currently in your career and you know, you, you have a Hadoop experience and some of the other things, I still would recommend keeping that project section because then you can kind of go into detail and talk about more of the things that you've done. This will help you get past the machines, right? Because a, a lot of, a lot of things that happen right now, whenever you're applying for a job, whether it be on your application or your resume, you have to get through some of the keyword searching, right? So you want to have, you know, in a readable way, right? You want you, you don't want to just put Hadoop on there 25 times for no reason, but you want to be able to explain it and be able to have that your resume kind of rise to the top or application. The second thing that you want to do whenever you're doing this, so I talked about having that project section, talked about being able to you know have that in your uh, job experience if you have it applicable. But what you want to do is you want to take the skills for your that you're applying for. So each each individual um, posting or job job application that you're looking for, it's going to have a different description on what they're looking for, right? Hadoop administrator, for example. Maybe one job description has Hadoop administrator, and they have a couple different lines where they're talking about using Flume or using Elasticsearch or maybe using Object. You know, so some maybe S3 protocol to be able to move their data to in HDFS. Those those give you the opportunity to see what they're really looking for, right? So if you have a project or if you have some on the job experience, I would make sure that I'm including and talking about what I've done with Flume or S3 or, you know, Elasticsearch or whatever some of the job descriptions are. Make sure that you can go back and you can kind of put those on there. I'm not saying go and put something on there that's false, but I'm saying any of those relevant skills for the things that they're calling out for, make sure that you're explaining it and talking about it in your, you know, in the project section or in the job, uh, your job experience history section. And lastly, what I really want to touch on too is there's so many opportunities out there for us, right? I mean, we, we want to be involved in the big data space. Um, make sure that you're going through from a social perspective and, you know, finding out some of the communities that you're engaged with. So, you know, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a very good one. So, you know, get it, get involved there. Follow me, come out and find me if you're on there. There's so many different groups that you can get, get in and get involved with to really shine and maybe even connect with some of the people that you're, for the company that you're applying for. So make sure one, you know, you have you have a professional professionalness to your uh, social media accounts. And then second, be active in those communities. So this gives you the opportunity. You know, I always talk about on here, you know, start a blog, start a YouTube channel where you're talking about things that are relevant to the community, giving your opinion, maybe showcasing your skills, maybe back to the example where we were talking about, maybe showcasing how you can use Flume in your own little development environment to be able to show out so that when they when they talk about it, when they want to see it, you can actually connect that back to your application or your resume. So many um, applications and companies they 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 want us they want links and, and references uh, in the application process. So this gives you an opportunity to link to your blog, link to your YouTube channel, keep it professional, you know, but be opinionated in it too, right? Have have an opinion, and you know, talk about some of the things that are going on in the community or showcasing those those skills, but keep it professional. So that's all. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode on how to build a resume for a Hadoop administrator, you know, whether you're starting out or, you know, just finishing college or, you know, in your career there. So if you like this video, make sure you share it. Go ahead, like it, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next time on the next episode of Big Data, Big Questions!